season marks the 25th anniversary of NFL Charities. NFL Charities was established so that NFL clubs could collectively make grants to national nonprofit organizations in the areas of education, youth football development, physical fitness, and sports-related medical research. This year, NFL Charities will award grants totaling more than $5.5 million to more than 150 nonprofit agencies. This first half highlight coming up was brought to you, is brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT. Let's look and listen. That was, that was the crack of Robert Brooks' helmet as he scored on that touchdown pass from Brett Favre. That made it 14 to nothing. Now, with Santa Claus on the scene wearing Wesley Wall's uniform, let's look at the first half statistics. Packers 115 yards on the ground, 159 passing. Look at the Carolina total well, passing. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, we talked about that, that, that you know, you're minus two yards. You just can't get it done with that. And, and, and what happened is Kerry Collins only completed two passes in the first half one of those passes was for no yard. So, you know, if you're going to be an offense, you have to have some mixture, and that mixture has to include, you know, runs inside and outside, and, and passes inside and outside, and, and uh, they just they just didn't get it done. I yeah. mean, their their offense, the Carolina Panther offense in the first half was really non-existent. In fairness to him, Kerry Collins, nobody really has been open. Oh, and you know, and 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 Frick Shermer's given him a lot of looks. Yeah. I mean, he's had three-man line, four-man line, eight men up, blitzing, blitzing safeties, blitzing corners, bringing everyone, never showing him the same defense mm -hmm. on a play back-to-back. -back. Casey to kick off. Aaron Hayden and Don Beebe back deep for Green Bay. They lead 17 to three. Packers, a pretty good-looking machine. Casey's kick to be handled by Don Beebe. Beebe to about the 37, and let's look at the breakdown for Brett Favre, the way he goes about his operation. Well, you know what he does is, is he goes back in rhythm, and they, they either go a three-step drop or a five-step drop. And then there's sometimes he throws out a rhythm, but when he's been in rhythm, he was 10 out of 18, two touchdowns, one interception. On the move, you know, when that rhythm has been broken and he's had to move either in the pocket or out of the pocket, he was 0 for 5 in the first half. Sometimes he's better when he's out of rhythm. They open with three wide receivers. That's Antonio Freeman who makes the catch for a gain of about six. No one blew the whistle. Nope. Antonio Freeman went down, and they thought he was down, but the officials didn't blow the whistle, so he was able to get up and get a couple more yards. Although they looked like they're marking it where he first went down. I think they're saying he probably went out of bounds there, but they maybe did not blow the so. whistle. They didn't blow the whistle, and they're right down in front of us. Sean King, these are for the Panthers. Sean King and David Scarito are both out of the game. They will not return. The keys to this Carolina setup. Green Bay to 11. No gain. In fact, I, I think I see on the on the Packer offensive line. I don't think that Earl Dotson is in there for this second half. I don't I don't know that you know, you know he is suffering migraine headaches, but he does have problems with migraine Bruce headaches. Bruce Wilkerson. And, and you see Bruce Wilkerson right here is now the the right tackle for the Green Bay Packers. I mean, it could mean nothing. It could mean that they're just giving Earl Dotson a rest, but it could mean that there's also something wrong with Earl Dotson. He has a bruised left shoulder, not related to the migraines. Favre gets it with a body draped around him, throws a complete pass to Antonio Freeman. <laughs> and you wonder, there's there's one of the things that, that only Brett Favre can yep. do. I mean, yep. he goes back there, and we talk about being in rhythm, being out of rhythm, and we see him back here, and he's going to go and pass from here. We see Antonio Freeman down here, and, we, and, and you know that he can go, and he's so big, and so strong that he can break the tackle. 
You now forget what? how big he yeah. is. You see, and he pumps and he pumps, and then he just he just throws right through a tackle. Yeah. First down, Green Bay. And this is Levens. Dorsey Levens lost a yard. Chad Coda up quickly to make the stop. You, know, you notice how, how Dorsey Levens, and the, you know, we saw it coming last year, remember it? The, in fact, against Carolina in the yeah. championship game where Dorsey Levens looks like one of those backs that just gets stronger and stronger as the game goes on and stronger and stronger, you know, like in the third quarter and the fourth quarter, and he gets more and more yardage as the game goes on. tight end not quite a first down Dorsey Levin in the first half this is the whole season now 591 rushing yards as John Madden said in the second half he gets stronger and has 770 rushing guards. You know, and part of that has to do with winning too. You know, <laughs> as you're as you're winning, uh, you'll run the ball more. Levin gets the first down. Wasn't much there when he first had a look, so he took it to the outside and got it. But that's what all the players are saying about Dorsey Levens now. You know, at one time, remember when he used to back up Edgar Bennett? He was kind of a third down back, and he would come in and run some draws, and they would throw him the ball. And they didn't know if he was a durable and a real strong runner, but as he became the featured back, he's become tougher and tougher, and now everyone's talking about how hard he is to tackle. I don't think he knew if he could take the heavy load either. Here he is. Still on his feet as Levin gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a half yard he picked up. Michael but, Barrow played that pretty well. Yeah. He was the outside linebacker on that side, and the first thing he did, in fact, the third thing he did is got hurt, but the first thing he did is didn't let him get outside. The second thing he did was get in and get him tackled, and then, as I said, the third thing he did was hurt his left ankle. Timeout, 17-3, Green Bay. Jolly. inside the Carolina 30. That's a heck of a call by Mike Holmgren. I mean, who would think on second and long, the Panthers go to a, a, a nickel defense. Now they go to one back and you're sure that they're not going to run the ball and, they're, and because the only guy they got there is William Henderson and they run the ball, they get in a, a passing formation. Henderson is the only back back there. You think he's going to be a blocker. They hand him the ball on a draw, and he gets a first down. Yeah, pretty good run, too. A heck of a run. I mean, that's the thing that William Henderson can do. I mean, you think he's a blocker and a little pass receiver, but he is also a good runner. Far stake, and he fires. Pass caught by Antonio Freeman. First down at the Carolina 12. Yeah, we were talking about how, how, how you don't have to be very open. Now, watch here. Freeman, uh, he makes a little move to the inside, you see, and then back to the out. Now, he's open right there, and here comes the ball. Watch. He, he, he's open by about a half a step, and Brett Favre knows that he can lead him out a couple steps, and that Freeman will use his body. That is perfect. Earl Dotson is back out of the locker room now. Here's Levin, inside the 10, about the 9. You know, it seems like the, the Green Bay Packers have had the ball this whole game, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. It seems like the offense has been out there, that the, the Packer defense has really been rested and fresh, and the Panther offense hasn't been out there at all. Well, there it is right there. <laughs> like they've been out there twice as long, and had almost twice as many plays. Second and seven. Two tight ends set up for Green Bay. Back to throw it. Gets it. Dorsey Levens and Levens gets down to about the five. Five and a half yard line. You know, the backup tight end for the Packers, Jeff Thomason, isn't active today, right. so 
Their only other tight end is Tyrone Davis right there, number 81. And they and, like him. And they like him. And they have some plays for him down in this area, too. You know, and that's why they, they put him in there. I mean, part of the thing is he's not a real blocker. He's more of a pass receiver type of guy. But, but you know, he, he is a, a, a receiver that is a big target in that end zone. You wouldn't be surprised then to right see down. him score a touchdown here. Antonio Freeman's third or second Favre's third of the day. I think the way Brett Favre is going to Antonio Freeman, uh, why change that? Here's Antonio Freeman right here. Now, we know that once he gets inside, you see, he makes a little move to the outside. In fact, a great move to the outside yeah, on Tyrone Poole. Then he holds Poole to the outside. Then he gets that step to the inside, and Brett Favre is going to hit him on that slam. Ryan Longwell for the extra point. Which is good. But that was a great move by yeah. Antonio Freeman on Tyrone Poole. His 11th of the season, Favre's 33rd touchdown pass of the season. Green Bay 24, Carolina 3 with 7.50 left in the third quarter. Brett Favre has already thrown 29 passes. That scoring drive, 12 plays, 65 yards. Favre was six for six in that drive. And yeah, when you have numbers like that and pass protection like the Packers have had, why not throw it every down? Why not? Bates. Packers are down in a hurry. Bates is down at about the 13. Where the Panthers will have a long way to go. Antonio Freeman, who has scored twice. Getting dark in Charlotte, both for the Panthers and for nature. 24 to 3. The Packers leading. Packers still hoping that something will happen to the 49ers so they can play a couple of playoff games at Lambeau Field. Well, the 49ers would have to lose two, and the Packers yeah. would have to win both of theirs. Running hard is Fred Lane. This game summary is brought to you by Bud Light. Far of the 16 out of 29, 275 yards, three touchdowns. Freeman has caught eight for 125, 215 yards, as I said. Carolina eliminated with a loss, so they're going to have to get some things going. And Green Bay is looking awfully good. You know, and I've always I've always said that you know that you get in position to make a run for the playoffs before Thanksgiving and after Thanksgiving you make a run for the playoffs and then the team that is peaking as they go into the playoffs is usually the team that goes to the Super Bowl and 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 to me the Green Bay Packers right now are one of the team and there could be other teams that are going to be peaking mm -hmm. from Thanksgiving you know until the end of the season but but the Green Bay Packers are one of them. Most definitely. Lane outside the 30 of the 31. First down, Carolina. Isn't Fred Lane something? Here's the guy that uh, undrafted uh, free agent from Lane College. And you get into a big game like this where you have to beat the Green Bay Packers to stay alive. And you kind of put it all on Fred Lane's shoulders. And Fred Lane undrafted, as you said. 13 carries, 59 yards today. I asked him yesterday how he reflected on being undrafted at a small college and how he felt today being asked to carry the load. And he said, well, sometimes I smile. He said, sometimes when I'm all by myself and I think about it, I, I just smile. I smile. Kind of a nice story, you know, because yeah, oh, it, it really story. is an underdog story. You know, the one that I mean, we know about all the high draft choices that get paid big bonus money. And sometimes it's refreshing the guy that doesn't get paid and he doesn't get drafted. Lane comes College. in and beats out some number one draft choices. Lane College in Tennessee, very small, enrollment about 250. 
For a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. Well, Pat, as you and John know, the end of a reign for the Dallas Cowboys, definitely not, obviously, the NFC East champs, and the first time since 1990 will not go to the postseason. Desperation play ended the game against Cincinnati as the Bengals up into them 31-24 today. Let's take it back to Pat Summerall and John Madden. Third and three. Here at Erickson Stadium. Three wide receivers for Carolina. Collins back to throw it. Pass is caught, not enough for a first down. Yeah, that's another one of those things, and, you know, and nothing's really going right for the Carolina Panthers today, but that's one of those situations where it's third and three, and you throw a pass short of the first down marker. Ray Carruth made the reception. And they're going to get a measurement on this yeah. one, but. I'm sure with this score here, 24 to 3, that, that if they are short, that they're going to go for it on fourth down. No, well, they're not they're short. Not short, so they don't have to. Re yeah, it was interesting seeing Dom Capers over there. Dom Capers didn't go home this last week. You know, they played the Dallas Cowboys yeah. on Monday night. He came back here, stayed at the stadium, slept in his office that night and every night of this week. Didn't go home at all. He said he probably won't go home next week. In fact, they have three games in 13 days. Yeah. And it was also, last week was the first time that they didn't wear pads. The leg hauled the place. He slept the cell. That's Rick Carruth again. Tackle by Eugene Robinson. And if Carruth had gotten by Robinson, he had some pretty clear sailing. Sailing. You know, they're going to have to work in the offseason with Hussein Muhammad and, and Ray Carruth. Ray Carruth being their number one draft choice this year. You know, they're young wide receivers. Work with Kerry Collins and, and, and get something going because in this league, you have to be able to get the ball to wide receivers. Collins is behind the intended receiver, Ray Carruth. Ruth is upset there because he did have man-to-man. -man. The closest guy to him was Eugene Robinson, and he could have caught the ball if we're thrown in front of Robinson or on this side of Robinson, and Kerry Collins just threw a bad pass. You don't want to do too many of those. I mean, that, you know, Kerry Collins knows that he threw a bad pass, and he doesn't have to be reminded yeah. by, by a player in front of a big crowd like this. Not as big as it was. Well, in front of any crowd, right. It's a sellout, of course. All of them are here. Blitz coming. Collins just barely got rid of it. That's an old thing that he didn't even throw it to a receiver. He was yep. just trying to get rid of it. And when your passing game gets to that, that you don't have a, a hot receiver, you're going to see the blitz coming. And again, this is a Frick Shermer thing. If you don't block his blitzes, he's just going to keep doing it. And when you get free, Gary Collins just has to throw the ball away. Pressure by so Jermaine. Jermaine Smith. Nobody blocked him. Darren Sharper back deep. That is an excellent punt. Well, people ask me all the time, why don't they kick for the coffin corner? That's that corner where the field and the end zone run together, and he did. Good kick. Dorsey Levins is getting a rest, and Aaron Hayden is the running back for the Packers. Standing back in his own end zone. Brooks goes in motion. Far goes back to pass. Freeman tried to run the old hitch and go. Didn't work. <laughs> Listen to Farvey say, hey, he tackled the guy. See, when he's throwing the hitch, that he's going to do that stop. And he did tackle yeah, right there. Who? Rod Smith. Yeah, I think I think part of that was Freeman, though. I mean, yeah. Freeman kind of ran into Rod Smith. And when he did run into him, it looked like Rod Smith kind of grabbed him. But Brett Favre saw the whole thing. Aaron Hayden gets all the way to the 15-yard line, stopped by Mike Mentor, one of the two safeties. 
and nobody touched him touched him until he got to the safety well and that's that's the dominant offensive line to me this this line started dominated in the second half I said this earlier against the green uh, uh, when the Green Bay Packers played the Dallas Cowboys when they dominated the Cowboys to me that was the start of the domination of this group here and the start of the downfall of the Dallas Cowboys this year Henderson gets the carry picks up about four There's Frank Winters in there Aaron Taylor Adam Timmerman those guys in the middle I mean they just blew everything out there you don't talk much about you know you know, you know Timmerman but he's he quietly does a good job in there when Frank he's... Winters the center you know the kind, kind type of job he does wouldn't you say he's the key to the offensive line Winters Frank Winters is that's what Brett Favre says he yeah. thinks that if there's anyone that he would have to not play with the first guy that he wouldn't want to not play with is Frank Winters. Bob going deep for Brooks. Brooks ran out of bounds, forced out of bounds, covered well by Rod Smith. And that's Brooks's fault there because he gets too close. When you're going to run it up, you have to give your quarterback some 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 room on the sidelines because he has to be able to throw the ball over and to your outside shoulder. When you get right up against the sideline then he can't throw it to your outside shoulder and you can get run out of bounds the way Robert Brooks just got ran out of bounds on that play. Third down about seven. Seven for eleven the Packers are on third down conversions that's good. He hasn't hit Mark Schmier in a long time. Barb gets rid of it. Intended for Henderson. Lucky to get rid of it. Had people draped around him. He was up there saying something to Michael Barrow. Barrow has is, 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 is been pretty active against him all day. Here's Barrow right here. And you see he makes a little move there on Hayden. And he's the guy that gets the, the sack or forces forces Brett Favre to throw the ball. Favre looked up and said, you didn't have to slam me in the <laughs> ground like that. Barrow says you've been making a long day for us. Craig Hendrick, short kick. Rolls away from the return man. The Packers down it at about the 40, about the 40 yard line, maybe the 41. 134 left in the third. I always told everyone they were a primary receiver. If I put five guys out, we're throwing to you. And then they say, well, you know, I didn't get the ball. You say, well, next one I'm going to throw to you. Yeah, get there, get there. That's my game. What's yours? This year, the old Farmer's Almanac predicts 50 inches of rain. Is your rent-a-car company ready for that? Not exactly. And 40 inches of sleet and snow. Are they ready for that? Not exactly. Starting January, Hertz introduces a more comfortable way to return your car. The new Hertz Return Center, where you're protected from the weather all the way to the terminal. Does your company do that? Not exactly. Turn it up, love to pump, slam dunk. You can feel sound. I mean, if you hear a collision, you know it's a collision. Boom! 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 You don't have to ask. Was that a collision? I like yeah. it. Got it. Got it. Hey. Yeah. That's my game. What's yours? Fox travels the globe to bring you the world's funniest bloopers, blunders, and outrageous commercials. James Brown hosts the world's funniest tonight at seven, six central. So you say you want to play in this league. Here's Terry Mickens. Now, he's what they call the gunner. He's one of the guys on the punt coverage that can go down. Then they put two guys to hold him up. And watch what these two guys do to him. First, they knock him out, out of bounds. That's why the official's helmet went down, or hat went down. And then they, I don't think they have rules for those guys anymore. I don't think so either. I mean, I mean they grab, look, look what they do. I mean, they, they grab, they pull, they push, they tuck, they tucker, they do everything. And then, and then they thank each other. They say, nice work. 
But I think all rules are off on that deal. Allen completes to Ray Carruth for a Carolina first down. Stopped by Seth Joyner. Well, we've been talking all day about what the Carolina Panthers have to do, and they have to widen this field a little. And the way you widen the field is, of course, is to hit one of your wide receivers. And when you're 24 to 3 in a minute 17 seconds left to go in the third quarter, you're getting a little late start on doing it. Collins having problems hearing the calls. You know he has a microphone, of course, in his helmet. Or a receiver in his helmet, not a microphone. The plays are called into him by that method. Goes deep. Very deep. Problem being, he had no receiver deep. Now, the one receiver that he had deep was Ray Carruth, and there were four Green Bay Packers back there, so he knew that, that if he threw it to Carruth, it was probably going to be an interception. Because watch what happens here, and, you, and you'll see when he throws the ball, Carruth is going to be in the middle. Now, if we can stop it right now, we see this is what he's looking at, and he knows that he got the double here, so he just throws it over his head so it's not intercepted. Had he thrown that ball to Carruth, that would have been intercepted. Second and ten. Red lane. Flag on the play back at the line of scrimmage. Another flag downfield. That had to be for face mask, the last one. Two flag. One way downfield where Lane was running and the other behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and the one behind the line of scrimmage is in the area of offensive holding against the Panthers. One downfield is usually in the area of a face mask violation. But all the Panthers are standing back there by where the holding line of scrimmage started. On the offense, number 78. Five yard face mask on the tackle. Penalties all set. We'll replay second down. Number 78 is Blake Brockermeyer. He's the, he's the left tackle, and the play went around the left, so that did affect the play. Here's Brockermeyer here. I think he's going to hold Gabe Wilkins here, and the ball is going to come. You see they got it right there. That's okay. That's okay. I guess they called that a hold at the end, but I think, I think offensive linemen do that kind of thing on every play. And right there was the face mask by Doug Evans. That didn't look that bad by no. Brockermeyer. No, it didn't. Brett Lane is not inclined to run out of bounds, is he? Second down. Collins. Gets the ball to Ray Carruth. And Carruth struggles for another yard, gets to 39. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Mike Holmgren, we already saw he put Hayden in as a running back, and I wouldn't be surprised if we get into the fourth quarter here as we are now, I wouldn't be surprised if he would start making some substitutions and maybe start thinking of taking Brett Favre out. That's the end of the third quarter with the score Green Bay 24, Carolina 3. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. I'm her mother. An all-new X-Files, tonight at 9, 8 Central. With Plymouth, this is what you pay for, and this is what you get. For instance, Plymouth Voyager. You get standard air conditioning, car-like handling, easy outroller seats, and more. And this is what you pay. At $17,245, it's the lowest price minivan. One more time. This is what you pay for. And this is what you get. Get up to $1,000 cash back on select Plymouth minivans. See your Plymouth dealer today. All that sizzles. All that skewers. All that steams. You'll find all that and more in the meat department at Pick and Save, where our USDA choice beef means superior flavor. Our 1 8 inch trim, exceptional value. And an expanded selection that means more great tasting variety throughout our meat department. All backed by our 200% guarantee that we'll just about guarantee you'll never need. At Pick and Save, you'll find the best meat in town. Guaranteed.
With all the rush and excitement of the holiday season, Cousins would like to remind last-minute shoppers that Cousins gift certificates make a very tasteful gift. Just visit a Cousins near you. While you're there, enjoy a delicious Cousins sandwich for a quick lunch, or take some hot subs home for dinner. And don't forget Cousins party subs for your Christmas, office, and New Year's parties. As our way of saying thanks, you can get unlimited cookies for just 25 cents each. Cousins, better bread, better subs, and best wishes for a happy holiday season. We're talking Packers tonight at 1035 on Fox 6. Here's Brett Favre, who enjoys uh, all parts of the game. Well, you know, I think he looked at that and decided that that thing on his shin wasn't big enough to really deserve that big a band-aid. So he took it off. I think he might be through playing for the afternoon or well, for the evening. Especially if the Packers hold the Panthers here. And don't let them in for a score, I'm talking about, not on, on, on third down. But I think the, the deeper we get into the fourth quarter, and if the Panthers don't score, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Brett Favre would be finished for the day. I think if the Panthers were to score here, I think Mike Holmgren would, would rethink that. Lane got the first down, first and ten. But you see, if you're going to have a big old Band-Aid like that on your leg, then you better have something that's worthy of it. <laughs> if it's not worthy of it, then you better take it off. I look pretty serious. Or someone cut. No. 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 Red Lane. <laughs> Touchdown, Fred Lane. Watch his dance now. Got the dance. He's not going to do it. Got the ball. He just takes it. He gets a lead block here. Boy, they really get a good kick out. They get Leroy Butler blocked. He runs by, right by Eugene Robinson and then just dives into the end zone. That was kind of pretty good blocking by the Panthers and, and, and some poor defense by the Packers. KC for the extra point is good. And so the Carolina Panthers get their first touchdown of the day. You follow the leader. You follow the pack. Then you get a Katera. Suddenly, you don't follow anything. Katera, the caddy that zigs. There's no question that computers open up entirely new worlds. But what about children who live in a world that can't afford personal computers? Fortunately, as of today, we'll never have to ask that question again. Network computers allow everyone to join the information age. And we'd like to say, welcome, Oracle, enabling the information age. Introducing Nintendo Score 64 and win at Taco Bell. Just peel the coin off the lid, score 64, and you could win an N64 system, cash, or millions of other great prizes. And who knows who'll win the Porsche Boxster? It's score 64 and win, only at Taco Bell. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Dr. Pepper, your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. By Katera, the caddy that zigs. By Miller Lite, now official beer sponsor of the NFL. And by Visa, the official card of the NFL that's everywhere you want to be. 24 to 10, Green Bay leading Carolina. A lot of time left. 14-16. And I'm sure the next time, or when the Packers get the ball this time, Brett Favre will still be in there. Casey's kickoff sails to Don Phoebe. 
Beebe is taken down at the 20. Here's Fred Lane's touchdown. Watch his eyes. Yeah, look, I mean, I mean, here's a guy who's gaining 105 yards today against the world champions, and he wants to get a touchdown against those world champions. He sees that end zone and says, let me have that one. Isn't that something? He's carried the ball 17 times for 105 yards. That's his fourth game he's had this year yep. over 100 yards. Heck of a back. Heck of a fine. He said after the season he's going to take a couple weeks off and then come back here and work the entire offseason to get better. We asked the Carolina Panthers yesterday when they thought he was going to be what he has become. That's Aaron Hayden running for the Packers. They said the second day he was in camp they knew he was something special. Yeah, and usually usually you do you know I mean if, if someone is something special it doesn't take you weeks and months to find out I mean it takes some people time to develop to get ready to play and those types of things but if a guy's a player you know it the first day like the Packers knew about Ross Verba the yeah. first day yeah that doesn't mean he's going to play the first day but you know hey this guy this guy's going to be something he came in nasty and has remained so Freeman first down Green Bay we asked for Asked Verba yesterday what was the toughest thing for him to get used to or just to when he came with the Packers and went from college to professional. He said nothing. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, when he was a kid, he, he had a, a football field in his backyard and he was like eight or nine years old. He was playing with kids who were 15. And, he, you know, he said that's how he got to be tough and aggressive because yeah. he was playing with kids twice his age because he had the field. He had, he had to mow the field and he had to chalk the field and then he had to have the ball and then they'd come and play and let him play. That's Hayden. And the thing that really started him off on the tough track was being in the basement, he said, <laughs> and playing in full pads against his father. <laughs> Who used to break his nose. Yeah. You know, you know, he started out in Iowa, he was a tight end. And then, and then he went from 245, and then he became a tackle, then to 265, then 285, 290 his senior year, 305 this year with the Green Bay Packers. That's development. That's child growth and development. And a pretty good diet. And a pretty good frame. Watch out. Ball's on the ground, and the Packers get it back. Henderson, I believe, got on top of it. Boy, Mike Minter really timed that thing perfectly. He's a rookie free safety, and he's going to come up, and he's going to hit that thing. And you're going to see, here he is right here. But you see, you're back here, and you want to be at this point when the ball is snapped. Now watch Minter. He's timing it and timing it and timing it and timing it. And then just as the ball snapped, he hits that hole, and they have no chance of picking him up. Hayden came over and tried, but... Look how well he timed it. He's not even in the frame there. And then he gets in the frame. And like you said, Hayden couldn't get over and get him blocked. Third and 11. Barr thought he was going to get a rest. But the Carolina team got on the scoreboard. And now they've got a lot of enthusiasm going. And Barr is still playing. And this is Hayden. I think Fred Lane had a little to say about that. When he scored that touchdown, everything changed on that. Green Bay sideline. Uh, Brett Favre was there with a stocking cap on, and I think Bono was ready to come in. And the Panthers scored that touchdown. And Mike Holmgren pointed to Brett Favre and says, "You're still in there." So the Packers will have to punt. But I wonder if something's wrong with Dorsey Levens, because I don't believe that that, that Mike Holmgren would just be resting Dorsey Levens. This is a fine punt. Bounces into the end zone and out. Levin's got all of that. Or Craig Hendrick, I mean. The punter. Levin's is the man who was resting. They are guardian angels on wheels. Knights in shining armor who ride like the wind. And when lives are at stake, they are the cavalry that always comes through. That's why Texaco tests and retests clean system free gasoline under extreme emergency conditions. For all our heroes, for all of us, Texaco, a world of energy.
Chardonnay. There's a turning leaf on the label. And changing ideas about wine in the bottle. You follow the leader. You follow the pack. Then you get a Katera. Suddenly, you don't follow anything. Katera, the caddy that zigs. In the tradition of Ben Hur comes a new hero. Jump in, Mike. Throw the kid. No time for the baby. Ow! On The Simpsons, tonight on Fox. 24-10, Green Bay leads Carolina. Yeah, we were talking about the Gunners, and here's Travis Jervy down here, and let's watch what happens to him. You see, here he is again now. You want to take an outside release, you see, so you don't just take one of them. You're going to take both of them. You, you, you want to get away from one. Watch what happens to Jervy. He gets run out of bounds right into the Carolina Panthers sideline. Then he gets back up, and they're still getting him. First and ten. Stumble going back. Pass is almost caught by Ray Carruth and drop. I heard his hand. Yeah, I located think, a finger maybe. I think that's the first one that they've thrown on Tyrone Williams. He's really developed as a as a corner. You know, they lost Craig Newsom and and Tyrone Williams has been playing this this left corner and he's been playing pretty well. Very well. And that's the first pass that I remember throwing on Tyrone Williams today. Second and ten, Pat Summerall with John Madden. We're in Carolina. That's Red Lane. And Lane gets about eight yards when it looked like there was going to be about three. Right now for McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. Pat, a competitively played contest in New Orleans. As you take a look at Billy Joe Hobart, that he finds Randall Thrill Hill, only his second touchdown reception on the season. Nine total TD passes by New Orleans. Back to Pat and John. Third and one. Packers make a blitz. They did blitz. And Lane gets the first down. Eugene Robinson brought him down. And see, we talk about the eighth man up, and you saw the eighth man up for the Packers was Leroy Butler. So what the Panthers did instead of going, they saw the overload on that right side. So they went away from Leroy Butler and went to the left side. You see, here's here's Butler. See, this gives them the eight men up. So they have an overload on this side. So the place to run is back to the other side where they have a balanced defense. That's exactly what Fred Lane does. Here's Collins back to throw it. And complete Chris Mangum. The intended receiver. This game is presented by authority the National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Carolina Panthers and the NFL is prohibited. Second and ten. Twenty four to ten the score the Packers leading. Nine twenty left. Sin Muhammad makes the reception. See, that was out there on Doug Evans. And again, they've, they've, they've been pressing these receivers. And you're going to see, see, here's Doug Evans up here. Here's, here's Muhammad here. You see, and they got the tight coverage. So you have to use your size, and you have to get up the field and get by it, push off, you know, and, and come back a little. Now, if Muhammad would just run that pattern a little deeper, then they would have something going. That same type of thing. Come off the line right now. Don't wait. Don't stand on the line. Get up the field, get a shoulder on him, then make your move, then come back. Third and four. Anthony Johnson in the game. The blitz is coming. Collins gets rid of it. And the pass is on the hop to Ernie Mills. Well, that's what Fritz Shermer does. If he, if he can get there with three, he'll rush three. If he can't, he'll rush four, and then he'll go to five and six. And if he can't, he'll just keep adding the guy because when you have to pass like that on third down, Fritz Shermer is going to make sure that you throw it before you want to. Eight and a half minutes left. Ken Walter, the left footer back. High kick.
kick, and he's done a good job for that. There was no fair catch. No. You know, they have to give him a chance to catch the ball. They gave him a chance, but Sharper did not make a fair catch signal. And Gaskins, Purcell Gaskins, leveled him. 24-10, Green Bay. Could ever reach me was the son of a preacher man. Only boy who could ever teach me was the son of a preacher man. He was, he was. Oh, yes, he was. Now is the time. This is the place. This is the day. Dr. Pepper. Racing for interstate means my battery has enough power to run my car as well as some other race necessities like this mini fridge, track lighting, my foot massager, a window unit, and for those long races, who could forget the espresso maker? <laughs> Heck, I even had a big screen put in for my friends. Interstate batteries, power fast, built to last. Hey, Bobby, the burrito's done yet? Nice pants. Dockers. Khakis. My name is Rocky. I'm head of field security. On game day, it's my job to stay focused and composed. <laughs> but it ain't easy. Watch, here's Purcell Gaskins right here. He's number 55. And watch him come free. You see, he can go when the ball's kicked. He leaves. There's no fair catch. There's no fair catch. He lets Sharper catch the ball and then unloads on him. Boy. You know, you saw what it looked like, and now let's just listen to what it hears like, or hear what it listens like. Or hear what it sounds like. Or listen to what it hears like. Yeah. Or listen to what it sounds like. Aaron Hayden. You wonder, you wonder what Sharper is listening to right there. You know, it looked like, it looked like he started he to bear catch. To, yeah. yeah, I mean, it looked like his right hand. He started to bring it up and then decided, I better get catching with these hands. And then we we saw what it looked like, and then we heard what it sounded like. Second and five. Aaron Hayden. He gets the five. He gets a first down. Today's game is being produced by Bob Stenner, directed by Sandy Grossman. The associate director is Mike Roig. The broadcast associates, Fran Morrison and then Charles McDonald. Technical producer, Bob Muller. Studio produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. Senior producer is Bill Brown, and the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. First down, Green Bay. Les Miller. Yep, from... Arkansas City, Kansas. You got it right. He was very careful. Oh, yeah. 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 The way it's spelled, you want to call it something else. But he said, don't call Arkansas, not Arkansas. This is Hayden. Across midfield, all the way to the Carolina 47 before he's taken down by Rod Smith. He got in there behind Aaron Taylor and Ross Verba. He's going to come right in here in this left side right here. Boom, you get your blocks right there. He's going to get right into this side right here. You see, Verba gets a good down block, good yep. lead block, and that creates a heck of a hole for Hayden. 21-yard gain by Hayden. Watch Verba right here. He just comes down and just keeps up. You know, He just takes Miller right out of the yep. game. Miller from our Kansas City, Kansas. Verba from Iowa. Hayden again. Gets about five this time. Verba's from Des Moines, Iowa, and right after his last game, he left school, went down to Florida to start training. He knew what he wanted to be. All his life, he wanted to be a football player. 
and he wanted to be a pro football player. And when he was through with his last college game, a ball game, he went down to Florida to start training for his opportunity. As Dorsey Levens getting a rest here and his run up Aaron Hayden has run very effectively, I'd say. They get another try. A couple. Greg Cragen made the stop. Dorsey Levens. Nothing wrong with him, just getting a rest. Uh, you know, when you have a runner like that, and you know, at the end of every run, you're going to see how many hits that he takes. You know, that any time that you get a chance to keep him fresh, you want to do it. He is big and fast and talented. That's a pretty good group of And I know what, what Mike Holmgren is thinking of, that, that he wants Dorsey Levens to be ready for that playoff game. Third and three. He wants big Gilbert Brown to be ready and he wants Henderson. I mean he wants all his players to be as fresh as possible as they could be for that game. Brett Favre wants a timeout. Just under five minutes left. 24 to 10. Green Bay leading Carolina. 456 left. Green Bay headed for another victory. Third and three. Freeman. Knocked out of bounds inside the ten about the nine. By Mike Minter. You know, one time you had the feeling that the Green Bay Packers were just kind of a, a pretty good team with a great player in Brett Favre, but then as you see some of these other guys like Antonio Freeman come along and you see Dorsey, Dorsey Levin. Levin's run with the ball and some of the things Henderson can do and you can see the offensive line you realize that Brett Favre I mean it, you know it, it, in fact one of the, the Panther players was saying that Brett Favre is the Michael Jordan of the NFL yeah. and he could be but he does have a pretty good supporting cast too he has some Scotty Pippins that's Hayden down to about the six they just saw Mark Chimura there, usually usually one of Brett Favre's favorite targets, although, you know, since Sterling Sharp left, he really doesn't have that one go-to guy that he feels he has to get the ball to, but mm -hmm. he hasn't gone to him much today, and he's one of his best friends. Chimura, I think, only caught one pass today. That's right. He and Frankie Bag of Donuts winners. <laughs> Hayden. Hayden sails into the end zone. Touchdown. Aaron Hayden. That should put him over 100 yards. That's pretty easy when you get him worn down. Yeah. You know, Dorsey Levis is kind of smiling because he knows that he did the work. He knows that that offensive line did the work and, and not taking anything away from Hayden, but after you get him worn down a little, it's, it's a lot easier in that fourth quarter. Hayden has 85. I knew he was getting close. There's not as much pursuit. There's not as much gang tackling, and the one-on-one -on -one tackling isn't very well. And all you see leaving is the backs of your fans. They started out as a sellout, and now a lot of people have gotten an early start home. 31 to 10, Green Bay. Buying tires is a whole lot easier at a place with a good selection. Well, Sears has Michelins for whatever you drive. And right now, they're all on sale. Save on every Michelin in every size. So get in, get tires, and get rolling. Sears Auto Center. May I take your order, please? Spicy chicken sandwich. Wendy's Spicy Chicken is made with Dave's own blend of pepper and spices. It has a spicy hit that'll warm you up. Yes? Whatever the weather. I'll have what he's having. Touchdown run by Aaron Hayden. That was a heck of a move <laughs> yeah. there. Ronaldo Turnbull was all ready. He wasn't blocked. He was ready. He was squared. Knees were bent. Shoulders were square. Head was up. Your know, shoulders were just, uh, feet were right under his shoulders. And Hayden gave him a move and he goes boom right by him. Coach Mike Holmgren over congratulating Aaron Hayden. Remember when Hayden was with the San Diego yeah. Chargers? He was going to be their, their future runner. And 
He kind of got away from that idea and he ended up in Green Bay. A run is what he called himself. Michael Bates fielded the ball in the corner of the end zone on the bounce and got back to only the seven yard line. Mullen down to make the stop. You know, and this has to be a, a real letdown for the Carolina yeah. Panthers because. You know, you think of a year ago, they were in the championship game against these Green Bay Packers, and we watched Travis Jury, Jervy go down here. Sam Mills is blocking him. The old veteran gets him down. And then, and then one thing that they do on special teams, when they get a guy down, they keep him down. And sometimes the guy just stays with him and says, ah, what the heck, let's just stay here and watch this deal. <laughs> be careful. It might be if Barry Sanders were running with the ball, it would be a dangerous tactic. He might be back. Collins misses Mohammed. Saturday, it's another Fox NFL special when two NFC West rivals clash as Isaac Bruce and the St. Louis Rams head down here to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Coverage begins Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, right here on Fox. Panthers still have an outside shot at the playoffs. Anthony Johnson, who had such an outstanding year last year. And you think the whole team had such an outstanding year last year, winning the Western Division, winning the playoff game here against the Dallas Cowboys, going to the championship game against the Green Bay Packers. And this year has been nothing like that. Collins has to throw backpedaling and throws out of bounds. You said there's not many fans left here, but the ones that are still here are to boo booing Gary Collins. Yeah. But again, he really hasn't had the, the wide receivers to work with, and, and, and he's not the same. I mean, I think that, that uh, he did take a step backwards this year, and part of it was, was the injury. Uh, part of it was maybe coming back too soon. Part of it was losing 15 pounds. Part of it was just a couple weeks ago against New Orleans he had a concussion yeah but he's not the same guy that he was a year ago he was saying yesterday he thought that he had learned an awful lot and if he hasn't well and their defense isn't as good either. No, I mean, you know, they lost they lost Kevin Green and other things Next week, the final week of the regular season, it all starts with the pregame show featuring the 1997 Terry Awards. Then when uh, the NFC East rivals the Cowboys and the Giants scare off, uh, square off in Dallas, very little is ex at stake except for the fact that the Giants, if they beat the Cowboys next week, can go undefeated in the NFC East, and that's never been done before. You know, it's going to be interesting to see the Giants. The last time we saw them against Detroit, they really looked good. Yeah. And then they started to make that move, and, and now they're a playoff team. And I like the way the Giants got into the playoffs. The Giants got into the playoffs by winning, by earning the right to be there, That's not by someone else losing. As it should be. Steve Bono. Steve Bono, isn't it something? You look at Steve Bono in the number 13, and you and you realize that he's been in this league 13 years. Yeah. And when he was a backup to Joe Montana with the San Francisco 49ers, and one of Joe Montana's best friends, and then went to Kansas City as a starter there. Back up here with Green Bay. Second and seven. Hayden, no game. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, backing into the playoffs is not the way. I'll, I'll take it if that's what happens, but that's not the way to get in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, somewhere you have to win. I mean, like people are saying, Miami's a playoff team. Well, if you're a playoff team, you don't get blown out by Indianapolis. I don't care. And if you're, and the Giants have to play the Redskins, if the Redskins are a playoff team, then go ahead and beat the Giants. If the Giants are a playoff team, then go ahead and win. And, and there are teams that are going to back in to the playoffs. But I'll tell you, the one that I really like and respect are the ones that earn their way in. Right. And the Packers have earned it. Miller Lite presents... 
In the heart of Philadelphia, we find one bird who's not afraid to go out on a limb. Joe Ripley, an Eagles fan who lives down in Redskin territory. So like some tortured superhero, he keeps his identity a secret. Always knowing that if his neighbors back home discover his true alliance, squeezing into those tights will be the least of this bird's worries. at Miller. It's Miller time. Save $100 on professional installation and get $50 of programming certificate. So what are you waiting for? Go to your retailer today. What's the secret behind Agent Scully's daughter? Why didn't you tell me, Mulder? I thought I was protecting you. An all-new X-Files, tonight at 9, 8 central. Two minutes left at Erickson Stadium. The Packers 31-10. Over the Carolina Panthers, third and eight. Carolina will be eliminated with this loss. Tampa Bay is in. For the first time since 1982, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be in the playoffs. Carolina will be eliminated. And the Buccaneers are one of those teams that, you know, you know that played very well, yeah. uh, uh, looked pretty good, and then, and then didn't play so well lately. They were... Lost to the Packers last week, but then we're blown out by the Jets today. Mm -hmm. Winter in New England. Virginal, untouched, undisturbed. The way it was meant to be. Let's rip it. If you want to take on Sugarloaf, Adatash, Mount Snow, and any of these other great mountains with the American Skiing Company, take out your Visa card. Because none of the ticket windows at these six mountains take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Craig Hendrick back to punt for Green Bay. Carolina sending everybody. Tyrone Poole signals fair catch wisely because the Packers had it well covered. A minute 40 left. Green Bay 31, Carolina 10. Well, I don't think Dom Capers is going to have to spend the, no. the week staying here this week. No. You know, even though they do. They had a short week last week because they played Monday night, and they have a short week this week because they play Saturday, but I think when you're eliminated from the playoffs, there's no need to dig it into yourself anymore. Terry Collins still the quarterback. Ball bounces up in the air, bounces off the shoulder of Anthony Johnson. Did you get a look at the place? They call it the cell where Dom, you're talking about Dom Caper staying here. Did you stick a head in there? No, no, I wouldn't want to stick my head <laughs> in any place called the cell that, <laughs> no. that some coach slept all week. I just wanted, I just wanted to say hello. You know, I never, I never did that when I coached, and I, I never hey. believed in that. I always said I may, st I, I may work real late, I may get up early, but I'm always going to go home at night. Collins' pass is complete and then fumble. The Packers have it. Picked up by Roderick Mullen. Yeah, that's kind of a fitting end to the way the, the Packers have had their way with this Carolina Panther team today. Yep. I mean, anything they've wanted to do on defense, they've done. Anything they want to do on offense, running, throwing the ball. This is the type of thing we talked about, a, a Fritz Shermer defense. They just they just make plays. I mean, Mullen's going to come up here, and, and everyone is doing that now. As they go for the tackle, they're also the shooting that hand in there for the strip. 
So Green Bay takes over at the Carolina 20. Listen to this crowd now, Patrick. Saying, go pack, go, go pack, go. Well, the Packer fans are about the only ones left. Yeah, yeah, they're going to enjoy this. They're here, they're out there, and they're yellow. They want Steve Bono to go. <laughs> Bono just kneels down. The clock continues to run. You know, one thing about Packer fans, whether it's on the road or it's in Green Bay, they have a lot of fun. I mean, Packer fans enjoy their team. They enjoy their football. They enjoy their tradition. They enjoy their food, their tailgate, Lambeau Field, Frozen Tundra, Lombardi Avenue, Holmgren Way. They enjoy you know, those things. In addition to all that, when a visiting team goes, there was a letter in the paper this morning, letters to the editor about the about the courtesy that the Green Bay fans, uh, the way they treated and treated the Carolina fans when they went up last year to the championship game yeah. very hospitable yeah I think I think that they just enjoy not only their team and the tradition as I said but they enjoy football yeah and they enjoy it from from every side and from from both ends of it that ought to be I wonder if that's tough now that's it she's a ground panther <laughs> plenty farmer bean I've never tried ground panther well, I'll tell you whenever I go there though the to Green Bay, we always have uh, a chili from Chili John's, yes, don't we? And that's the best. I tell you, I started that when we used to stay there at the Northland Hotel. The Northland Hotel and Chili John's of Green Bay, you can't beat that. Reggie White, now you're talking Packers. <laughs> yep. 31 to 10. Play of the game brought to you by Energizer. Should be plays. And Tony o. Freeman. He just used his speed there. He ran right by Rod Smith and Chad Coda, and that was the one that Brett Favre just threw a dart to him. And there he is again. Put that good move on in the end zone. That was a great move. I send you now down to Tim Ring, who's with Darcy Levens. All right, thanks, guys. Darcy, a lot of thoughts that the Panthers had the edge in the motivation department. I guess just winning football games is enough motivation for the Packers. Definitely, you know, and we still have an outside chance of home field advantage. So we didn't want to come here and, and toss this game in the, in the trash. So everybody came out and played hard. You know, we talked about not having a letdown because uh, this game is, is really not a must win for us. But we definitely wanted to come out and win. Of course, your offensive line, nobody going to the Pro Bowl, but they all might be going to the Super Bowl. And that's really where it's at. That's more important than the Pro Bowl to me. You know, I was a little disappointed when the voting came out and not one guy got picked because they've been doing a great job all year. But the Pro Bowl, I mean, uh, the Super Bowl definitely way bigger than the Pro Bowl. How tough are you guys going to beat down the stretch? Tough, real tough. real tough. All right, back upstairs to Pat and John. All right, thank you, Tim. Thank you, Dorsey. Quite a back and quite a season he's had. There were questions about whether he'd be durable enough, and he certainly had. 31 10, Green Bay wins it. <laughs> Green Bay's record improves to 12 and 3 with today's conquest of the Carolina Panthers, 31 to 10 here at Erickson Stadium in Charlotte. The Packers can clinch home field advantage throughout the playoffs with a win next week and two losses. The 49ers must lose twice before that can happen. And Carolina today with the loss is eliminated from the playoff picture. Quite a come down from last year when they went all the way to the championship game, played in Lambeau and were beaten by the Packers up there. So for John Madden, this is Pat Summerall saying so long from Erickson Stadium. The final score again is 31 to 10 Green Bay. Don't forget tonight on Fox, this is the world's funniest, followed by The Simpsons, King of the Hill, and an all-new X-Files. Then next Saturday, it's another Fox NFL special when the Rams take on the Panthers in an NFC West matchup. Then Sunday, it's the final week of the regular season. And it all starts with the pregame show featuring the 1997 Terry Award. That's followed by the Giants as they battle the Dallas Cowboys or other exciting re regional action. Check your local listings. You've been watching Fox Sports coverage of the NFL.